Hi everybody, um, I'm Sasha and I'm the producer of the film The Song of the Cozy Home and today we have awesome guests uh, that we will have really exciting conversations. They're going to touch a lot on what we have covered in the film and um, super grateful for the opportunity to sit with these two young people who are doing something that hasn't been done before and it's been a dream of mine to expand a little bit deeper on the topics we have discovered or covered in the film and um, the feedback we have gotten from the people who watched the film that they wanted to know a little bit more about each of the subjects and so we have a great opportunity to sit down with Wishamitsa and Macarena. Wishamitsa is a Shipibo Curandero born in the community of Roa Boya Loreto he has begun his apprenticeship with his grandfather, Leonardo Inuma, at 13 years old, and later trained with his great aunt, Maestra Olivia Arevalo and Julian Arevalo at the age of 18. He has worked with a range of maestros and extensively translated dreams, visions, and plan the universe to students around the world. Today, he leads the Kushi Ayahuasca Retreat Center and educates hundreds of plant medicine students online together with Macarena Arias. Macarena is a Peruvian plant medicine facilitator de dedicated to bringing Amazonian traditions to the West. She graduated Harvard College with a bachelor's degree in evolutionary biology in 2014 and later began to work with Shipibo communities through the NGO Alianza Arcana in 2016. Around the same time, she began learning the Shipibo language with Professor uh, Pakan, Pakan Muni and started her plant medicine studies with Onaya Manuela Mawa, or also known as Hakun Rati, in 2020. And after a long-term dieta during COVID-19, Macarena received inspiration to partner with Shipibo teachers to bridge the language and the culture to the medicine community around the world. Since then, she has co-created many online educational uh, initiatives through the platform Kushi Nete. Today, she uh, continues to share Shipibo Konibo language um, and the medicine online and through in-person retreats at Kushi Ayahuasca. Together with her partner, Wushamatsa, she is co uh, completing her somatic experience in studies and works on her own artistic projects. So... It's pretty impressive, uh, the body of work that both of you have um, achieved, and you're so young. And <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing to have this conversation with us, and I'm really so very passionate um, about the Shipibo culture and just like my personal growth and knowledge, um, and what uh, has transpired for me as a part of walking this path and um, learning in the medicine and sitting with the Shipibos, my very first time was with uh, Ricardo Amaringo. And uh, when he started singing, I was like, oh my God, um, that's unbelievable. There was like just such a direct correlation between the song. Like I could see that the song was doing something. I had no idea what he was doing, but there was something so captivating that it just like, I don't know, my heart just was in it immediately. and. It's been a passion of mine to amplify this and like reach further into the world with this information. And in fact, I believe a uh, few people that I've talked about a medicine who have never sat with medicine, but the idea of the communion with plants and learning through plants and understanding the world through the patterns and, you know, all this. They're like interested, not even just firsthand experience, but even the knowledge itself, I believe, enriches our perspective. And so I hope that this uh, is going to bring a lot of fun and uh, uh, enrichment to anybody who's listening and who's learning something. And may that be of service to their lives. And so today's topic is traditional practices and frameworks of master plan dieta. How does a traditional student of master plants understand the dieta process? How do they diet and train? And how do they dis decode what is going on in dreams, visions, and in their diet process? Mm -hmm. And so our first topic is master plant and what that is. So 
there's a lot of talk about what that could be and a lot of descriptives on, uh, you know, on Google and different centers. And what is a master plant in the Shipiwa tradition? Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. question. Right. And I said, before answering the question, can I say something about um, why do we share about this work in the first place? You know, because mm -hmm. I feel inspired after the bios and mm -hmm. after hearing you, Sasha, explain your journey to meeting the Shipibo, mm -hmm. you know, and how kind of this came about because and then it has to do with like getting to understand this whole world right um just a little story is that um i was kind of like you know i'm peruvian you no know? so but still like to many peruvians especially peruvians that live in the capital city um this whole world is totally foreign to them you no know? um because going to the jungle is a completely different universe and Peru is this very culturally rich country um, that has so many universes inside of it right you go to the mountains that's one world you go to the jungle that's another world you're in this coast that's a completely different world no we have this kind of rich uh, geography and rich culture and so going to the jungle I was, I would say like any person from other countries that go to the jungle and are learning about the culture and learning about ayahuasca and learning about plant medicine and encountering for the first time this culture and the first time this technology and the first time this knowledge and the first time these Icaros, you know, which uh, as your documentary says, they call you home. So I would say that is a common experience for many of us, no? And mm. I would say maybe, you know, you, and Wesha is very different. He grew up with this, right? Mm. Uh -huh. mm. he, he, he grew up with this since the moment he was born into this world. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this is his culture. This is his home. Um, but for many of us, this is very new. And as this has traveled to the world so far and wide, no? Um, we're encountering something that we didn't grow up with. Um, and so I started to journey with ayahuasca. I started to journey with plant medicine. I started to do plant dietas, no? But of course, um, there is, even if I spoke Spanish, no, my, my language, even if I learned Shipibo, right? And learn it pretty well, I would say, um, to be able to communicate and understand enough, you know? But even then, even then, and what Shaman says is something very beautiful, just because I'm, right, what's your phrase? Just because I'm Shipibo, mm -hmm. no, doesn't mean I completely know this because it's like in the Western culture, it's one thing to know about medicine and it's a different thing to be a doctor right so it's it's the same in the Shipibo this mm. prof, it's a profession of medicine it's a profession of doctors you got to train in this to know this um so what happened with our own encounter right is like I realized through meeting Washamatsa who I believe is like such a wonderful bridge in this time who is alive to to teach us to bridge so much of the knowledge that hasn't been able to be bridged yet because of cultural barriers, because of language barriers, because of intergenerational misunderstandings between elders that grew up in a completely different world than young Western people, right? Mm. It's just two different complete worlds. And so we have here, I would say with us alive today in this time, such a wonderful bridge that can speak to the world. And when we started talking and having conversations, like one of the things I realized is like, whoa, so much of this practice, like I thought I understood, but actually I just had no idea <laughs> what I was doing, how I was doing it, like how to really ground myself in the ayahuasca ceremony, like how to read the codes, like what is even going on in my dieta process, right? Um, and 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 because this this technology has rules, it has codes it has ways of understanding it. it it has ways of navigating this that have originated from 
from generations of cultures, Amazonian peoples doing this, right? All over the Amazon. Um, and so it was in our interaction, in our conversations that I realized, wow, there is so much to this that I thought I was like really going by the book, but really there was so much I was missing um, that was leading up to more confusion than clarity, no? Because I wasn't really under, like the messages weren't getting through, the understanding wasn't getting through. And then I realized, well, okay. So if I'm feeling kind of confused about what, what am I doing in the whole ayahuasca plant medicine world, um, I wonder how my friends who I've been studying this with, how they are doing. And after having many conversations with this, I, with them, I realized, okay, so I think, I think they are at a place where I've also been, right? And not really getting to understand the codes because of just this gap in bridging, gap in translation, gap in culture. Um, mm -hmm. And we realized also that was happening with people coming to the Kushi Ayahuasca Center. Um, people that have been doing this for a while and then they are interested in coming to, to the center with us. And then we realized like, okay, so, so many people, <laughs> um, especially the ones that kind of go deep, but without um, grounding their understanding, like they just need some little understanding, you know, that to really ground their practice. Then we realized, okay, so many people in the world are having this experience where they would really benefit from having a little more guidance or a little more understanding, a little more uh, knowledge that doesn't get lost in translation. So this is why we started, you know, doing all teaching to the world, no matter if you come that with us or not, right? No matter who you study with, like we can really teach this because this is um, a system that is, I there, there is a base of understanding within the Shipibo Kunibo people, right? Mm -hmm. That every Shipibo person, I would say, because this is a tradition we're talking about, like they on there are some common understandings on how to practice plant medicine, how to diet plant medicine. What is it, how to navigate ayahuasca, how to navigate your dreams, um, all of how to train in this path, really, mm -hmm. no? What does that training imply? What does it mean? And with all the variety that there is, no? Mm -hmm. um, there is a common understanding. And especially I would say someone like Washamitsa who has been um, working not just with one family, but has seen other practitioners as well, and has been able to have this uh, wide view, no, wide view of like, oh, people in this family, people in this lineage, people in this other lineage. Ah, okay, I see how different people are approaching this technology, yes. no? And, and 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 have this perspective so this is how it kind of all started you know from our own personal um interaction and then like hey i think we need to share this to the world right i think i think we need to be a, a bridge because you have all this knowledge right Wesha? you had know the language um i've had this experience where i realized oh my god i think i need to reframe everything that i thought i was learning right um to be able to if no if what if i wanted to continue going deep in this path doing it in a way that really honors mm -hmm. you know what this tradition is really about um and what it's really trying to teach the world yeah. i think that's the key you no know, that's the key like what is plant medicine really trying to teach the world and if we can honor the ancient codes and the ancient practices then we can start getting a taste mm -hmm. no of what this is trying to tell the world no so this is kind of like our motivation um i know you want to say something um about about that no in your experience before we go into explaining mm -hmm. uh, dieta yeah. yeah and your training and, and because i would say just one little thing like well shamansa um 
it's very different, right? Like I first came to the Amazon and just wanted to try what a dieta was, how it could benefit my emotional, physical well-being, my spirituality, kind of like on a quest. But he is very different. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you come with like, okay, let's train to be a kurende. Mm. No, so you would want to share mm. more. Yeah, like uh, Benoit said something interesting. He said, like, Shipibos don't need to overcome this Western idea. How do I learn from the plants? They already know, right? Yeah. They already have that baseline to like, how, now I'm, get, I'm ready to learn, which is a little bit backwards for us because we first, we twist our mind backwards a little bit to open that enough to like even let that knowledge start coming in. Whereas people who are indigenous to that idea, they're like, oh yeah, of course, plants are telling me things. And I'm like, uh, like literally telling you things? Like, I don't know what you mean by that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, so I would love to hear the perspective of, uh, you know, that uh, firsthand. Oh, well, um, no, um, thank you. Well, that's the Micah, it's very, very beautiful to like, um, yeah, no, here and here one more time. <laughs> <laughs> No, so it's like bringing back the you no know, the the story, yeah. You no, know? so me when I met um, you no, know, it's the Maka. I think was the first uh, person in, in the Amazon in the jungle, you no, know, uh, that speaks uh, Shipibo, and I was um, impressed and and uh, uh, like also because um, I was feeling that she's really understanding what the Shipibo elders or grandparents in general are really singing about. And, I, and then I would say that I was a little worried, you know, because I was thinking that I'm the only one who is like, you know, hearing all these like beautiful stories. In a way, I was feeling a little selfish as well, you no? Know? <laughs> but, um, but no, no, we get to this point where you no, know, I was thinking, uh, that everybody, no, so it starts from Maka, no, and then I was thinking, oh wow, everybody. Then I get to know a little mo more um, other students, no, you know, that, that are in the path. So I was thinking, wow, there's a bunch of people learning this, you know. <laughs> oh, it's not just me. I was thinking, I'm just the, I would say the, the only one, you know, really like in the jungle, but because uh, I never really met someone or no, anybody else really like deep, no, like mm. diving deep in, in the medicine, you know, and uh, but no, I start to uh, no get to know a little more, no, all of them. I st I even like went to the centers, no. I took my backpack and went to this like uh, no do this little like research. I would say and see you not know, to see and understand what they're doing <laughs> and um so it was uh, it was very different it was very different from what i was i thought you no know? mm -hmm. so because um for me uh, being you know being uh, a shipibo uh, growing up around you no know, uh, shipibos uh, so we are always um, interacting with the plantas, no? Some of your uncle or grandpa would say like, hey, you know, Washa, uh, bring me, you know, the ahosacha leaves. Uh, bring some, is there some pot. We are going to, uh, no, cook uh, the, is the, the shiowaku bark, no? Uh, so we are going to prepare some remedy. But at that, at that point, I didn't know, no? Like what they were really doing. So, um, but I was watching, you know, I was watching what it was happening and you no, know, this was in the, uh, no, in the, in the, in the days, you no, know, in the days they are like interacting with the plantas. And then in the afternoons, you see, uh, you no, know, uh, different grandparents, uh, you no, know, uh, coming uh, to our house and asking why, why they, they come. You know? So they, they were coming to do a cleansing to the house. <laughs> to do uh, a cleansing, a payanti, no, we say in Shipibo. But, uh, and then I remember, no, they doing ceremonies and no one were, no, were taking, uh, taking ayahuasca than only the, the maestro or the maestra. And then singing to the, um, to the house, no, doing all these like clean scenes, but, and then the family is just there. The family is, no, they're like laying down. There is like little, little babies, no. Uh, there is like from all ages, ages. <laughs> 
uh, the Icaros, no, uh, super beautiful. And uh, but they are singing to the house. They are doing a cleansing and they are doing a panati a protection. So all these things I start to um, remember, no, in order like to share what we share today with mm -hmm. Maka, mm -hmm. what they, no, what what I used to see or how it used to be. Yeah. Because we don't see that now, for example, even in the Shipibu communities, we don't see that anymore. Yeah. No, that that's kind of lost, I would say. Uh, that's kind of lost. Yeah, so it's very beautiful, you know, that we have all these, you know, um, course, courses, you know, that we are, you know, bringing it, uh, you know, and sharing it to, to all you know, the community. So, um, that's why I would say, you know, the, the understanding, you know, the, the framework, you know, that we use or grandpa or gra grandmother, you know, share to me because I started doing the ayahuasca, but the ayahuasca was just, there is no, it, it, is, it wasn't really a dieta, you know, then when I started doing the dieta, that was a different thing. And that's the moment where um, everything I would say changes, you know. <laughs> So in having all uh, no uh, uh, non shi people people coming and doing dietas, that was even like uh, more surprising I would say because uh, they they have their own understanding you no know? so and then I was like oh so I have this understanding and then I was feeling a little strange I would say in the field because I'm like hey uh, what I feel it's not what they feel no. Mm -hmm on how I navigate or walk is not the way how they they do it. So and then I just end up, I think, you no, know, seeing on how people are more focused on the ayahuasca than than even of the tree that they are ingesting, you no? Know? So <laughs> so um that was uh, I, I I saw all the all, all you no know, those things in my path and uh, and not no dreams no so the way how in general the centers been sharing the medicine even the maestros no <laughs> i think um i was i was uh i was wondering where, where's the 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 dreams no interpretation where is this thing about the doctor you no know, philosophy at least that we have the the belief you no know, that we have where is the uh, the 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 structure no the structure no and an understanding of what this is really no mm -hmm. so i was feeling where and then i i just um then i i understood of okay. course why no of course why i understood why but i was like um eh, this is why I never, I would say, like really stay, you know, with with those people than just helping because they were, there were more people interested in other things, and I was like, you no, know, walking a path that um, no uh, grandmother opened for me in order to become a curandero. So, and so uh, simply, you no, know, what am I trying to like say here is just when we open a dieta to be a curandero is very different than just like you know uh, being in a space where you're just like trying experiment to, you know? trying to find yourself trying to find yourself right, right. uh-huh so yeah. no that's that's how it was for me you no know? in uh yeah so i understood i understood you no know? so oh, okay there is so many different ways to practice this medicine and that the medicine never really gonna come against um, no anyone the medicine is always gonna be there it's going to fertilize you no matter who you are, no, but how important it is to, I understood in myself, I told myself how important it is to not lose what, no, uh, the, the legacy or this mm. gift, no, that maestra or grandmother left mm. and why my people is not practicing. And then this is why I opened the Kush Ayahuasca because I would say no one, no, I, I, I would say... <laughs> In a way, no one is like really uh, getting that close. They are away, you know, far away from what it was. I I, I felt at least in my heart, no. Mm. So um, 
no so that's what you know it's it is in my in my understanding you no know, in my inspiration to uh, share no all what we share today mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and just to add you know um i would say like like the the masters today, they, they know that not everyone is coming to, to be a master, right? So this is what, you know, what Shama yeah. says, sharing. So I think this is why, like, there is this, has emerged a new category, you know, of plant medicine practice that has, like, that is catered for people with different intentions, you know? Mm. Um, that's what, what we can see. But in the case of Washamata, for example, no, for you, it's like, okay, you're going to be a curandero. You're going to go to curanderismo school. Mm -hmm. no? Let's get on it. Let's bring the coursework. Let's bring the practice. Let's bring mm -hmm. the training, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like this for you, like from the get go, no, mm -hmm. from the get go. And that's a very different kind of dieta experience, no? And then you have, of course, a traditional healing like physical body healing experience mm -hmm. and i would say like what has emerged right now is the more like spiritual um spiritual understanding this this kind of uh, finding yourself or you know um emotional healing uh use of the dieta mm -hmm. you no know? that's kind of new but now, as, as, as we can dive no, uh, into the question of what is a dieta, you know, we usually say, what is master plan first? Oh, what is a master, master plan? plan? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or how you define one, how, what, what's like the definition of it in, um, in the Shipibo framework? Right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, we want to go into that because the master plan would be like, if you go on a learning dieta or a healing dieta, the healing mm -hmm. dieta would be for your body, you know, or your mind or mm -hmm. your soul or any kind of energetic, um, but you need a master plant, mm -hmm. right? You need a master plant to do a dieta. So uh, mm -hmm. would you like to answer? Yeah, um, yeah. what is a master plant? Uh, well, uh, a master plant, you know, uh, so the ayahuasca, no, the ayahuasca, for example, no, the most famous one, I would say, no, we can uh, start with that, no, ayahuasca as a, as a master plant, no, and then uh, we can choose one planta, no, it's the shiwako, no, for example, yeah. So the framework, no, what we use, uh, you know, when we go into master planta is that, um, oh, the Shipibo people, local people, traditional people, they say, ah, ral atihaku. No, which means is you gotta make your friend, no, till or no, you gotta make your friend or you gotta really get to no marry it, no. So which means ragati, ragati in order to receive no the gift, the healing or the dong, no. So the gift, no, the skills. So master planta, no. When we uh, no we have this framework, so this is no. Mm -hmm. uh, on how we we we, we go you know, mm -hmm. with, with the plantas you know? so when we do you know uh, our friend you know, to the ayahuasca or a shiwako no so that is the moment when we are going to discover who is this you no know, tree or planta you no know, as the planta it is going to you no know, get to know about us so and it's going to help us the moment this planta or this energy it is going to provide a help no so which is you know, giving a gift a dawn or getting really to heal a body that's the moment you no know, we uh, classify you know, or talk about master planta you no know, mm -hmm. that heals and i was sharing this to mm -hmm. maka for the shipibo people it goes more into healing you no know, the physical body no, so mm -hmm. this is how it starts. No, and of course there is more from that. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's so it has to have a yeah. healing healing property, like healing body healing property, for it to be classified as a master plant. Yeah. So to because not every plant is a master plant, or not every plant is considered suitable for the dieta. No, so mm -hmm. it has to have two requirements. Like you say, one of it is it has to have healing power for your body like mm -hmm. a healing property and the second one it has to provide us with a gift of mm -hmm. skill 
No, so if you are on the learning track, mm -hmm. so if you're on the healing track, it has to be effective for your body. If you're on the learning track, it must provide a gift, a skill. Mm -hmm. No, it has to be a consciousness opener in that sense. Mm -hmm. No, um, has to provide a skill. So that is why it's a master, a master in the sense of a teacher, mm -hmm. a teacher. Mm -hmm. No, it teaches, or it is you have a more patient student, a patient doctor relationship mm -hmm. with it, mm -hmm. no? Or a teacher student mm -hmm. relationship exactly. with it. This is why master planter, it's known in the Chipivo, uh, Conivo, or at least from what I learned, this family, no? It's they known as the doctor, the murayas, the unangyas, no? Because they, they know, they know, they know this body. No, until the point there is no again grandmother say they create even this body because we get in connection through the master planta the master planta it is the not the evil mm -hmm. the owner of the universe mm -hmm. no the mm -hmm. ultimate mm -hmm. uh, the one mm -hmm. and only you no know? right so it gets it has this structure because that's the moment no a master plant is gonna take us there the teacher mm -hmm. no so gonna, yeah it's gonna explain to us now, if we're on the student path, no, it's not just um, explaining us about like shamanism, but it's teaching us about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. no? So going not just like it teaches, as you say, about the body, the physical, mm -hmm. the 3D realm. Then we go into like energetic mm -hmm. realms, no, this like spirit realm and the indigenous using indigenous frameworks. And mm -hmm. finally, not the evil in people is God. So master plans as a portal to truth as mm -hmm. a portal to god as a portal to mm -hmm. knowing about the ultimate divine existence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so all the plants are connected to god and uh th that's like the ultimate right like the ultimate connection that they can bring us to okay right uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that's like probably one the best explanation so far I've like heard on like definition of what is the master plan. It's like yeah, it can help you heal, it can help you learn, but like how do you qualify quantify one as a master plan? That's amazing. Thank you very much for that. That's really helpful to understand. Um, so there's a pharmacopoeia, so many different plants, and my understanding is over thousands of years they have been discovered. How do typically master plants or trees discovered um, by, do you need to open a, a diet with them or is there, a, 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 is ayahuasca pointing them out or how does that work? Mm. Mm -hmm. How do you discover a master plant? Um, well, yeah, first of all, no, yeah, there is uh, so many curanderas. This is a question I think I did to my, one of my grandpa, no? Is who is a vegetalista and he answered you no know, and it uh, it was i think uh, uh very beautiful i would say even for me you no know, as a student you no know. uh, so how's this uh when a curandero you no know, for example we are new curanderos you no know, i would say so we at some point we are going to get you no know, a super cushy test you no know, a strong test from the from the plants you no know? <laughs> It can be in many different levels. This is the moment where a medicine it is going, a plant, I mean, no, a planta. No, it is going to, um, no, this is how we are going to discover no, a medicine, no, a planta that is going to uh, be no, a remedy for us. Uh -huh. So uh, every time when a curandero gets ill, not just the curandero, but some of our relative, no, uh, or some someone from the community is gonna you not know, fall ill. Uh, we are going to you no know, try. So we will try several medicines, several plants. You no, know? we are going to try, it, and then we will follow the process, you no, know, and see which one, you no, know, it really worked for that. That is the moment where we are going to um, no have the name, we're going to have the number, we're going to have uh, no, the amount no, of uh, no, is the tea to use no, uh, in order to treat uh, a body. No? So that's how it normally uh, no, get discovered a planta. So uh, when, for example, other uh, 
curandero or healer que you no know, fall ill uh, for them for him or for her it is gonna work another medicine mm. because his influence or he's just different living in different environment different yeah. jungle different mm. family so for me the bobinsana works you no know, uh, to um, release you no know, all this like coldness but you uh, know my neighbor you no know, <laughs> he said no the bobinsana yeah i believe the bobinsana but no i use chirix and ango you no know, i have more faith so you see it depends more uh, i you know on how the uh, it's the when we go into the uh, you no know, practice and uh, this is how a curandero you no know, uh, this is why so many the you no know, uh, styles or you no know, ways to you no know, to use the medicine you no know? so and and this is how we are going to you no know, uh, discover you no know, a, a planta Uh -huh. and, and there is also another element um, that I, I remember we spoke about. Um, it's the what you call assimilation. Mm -hmm. you no, know? so now that we spoke speak about different environments, is there's different plants growing in different jungles, even you know. So it's like how the how traditionally people would equate the property of a plant with how its behavior was in nature. No? Mm -hmm. So if we talk about Bobensana, no, I remember Bobensana naturally uh, grows around the river banks, no, or around streams. And it its roots are so strong it doesn't just like get you know swayed away by the by the water. Mm -hmm. Right? It it stays there uh, resisting the cold water. It doesn't move. Mm -hmm. And so people you know would say like anciently you know they would be observing this no that's what your grandfather said i mentioned they would uh, be observing this and be like huh this plant seems to be really strong <laughs> no? seems to have such strong roots uh doesn't get you know doesn't doesn't uh wilt with all this water you know over it doesn't die huh i wonder if it can make my body strong right like it's so strong in nature and so then people will start trying it and i remember mm -hmm. you explained the sequence right mm -hmm. to first like bathe with the plant mm -hmm. and start dreaming and maybe you can mm -hmm. explain more about that yeah uh -huh. well uh no yeah. we don't directly get to like ingest any right. any any plant that we are going to find in the jungle right mm -hmm. <laughs> So the way to test a planta, no matter, you no, know, from like from, uh, no, the, the environment doesn't matter, you no, know, from, uh, you know, from, you know, we can just test it, you no, know, taking a bath. Mm -hmm. Now this is what the grandmother, you no, know, explained. You don't know about the tree, you don't know about the planta. What you can do first is, you no, know, a bath. Don't ingest it. Don't drink it. <laughs> first, take a bath. Because it could be poisonous. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It can be poisonous, that's true. Mm -hmm. So, no, take a bath with uh, no, the, the bark, no, soak it in water or the roots or the leaves or the flower or the branches, no, so test it. No? So, this is, and then wait for the dreams because that planta, that tree, it is going to show or appear in your dream, no, and they are going to bring some information for you. And according to this information, this message, you can continue no so this oh, is wow uh, no? wow uh -huh. okay and uh, and uh, now going into more like experiment or no more advanced i would say <laughs> you know like for example my with my grandpa we've been uh, no is the treating many different uh, no bodies i remember my grandpa said yeah you know we i have so i have already you know the recipe on how to treat no some illnesses but why we don't go and collect the ayauma seeds and dry it and smoke and we can ask to the doctor you no know, maybe they have some like new ways to heal this like body so there is this axis for example you no know, i remember and you know, also the ayauma planta you not know, the greatest doctor the dreamer you no know, that is going to that it can get to bring you no know, the, the information and to upgrade you no know, your whole like medicine you no know? 
and uh, this is what he you know, used to do for example you know, we used to do that mm -hmm. and this is you not know, the way how uh, we can get to discover you know in our dreams one more time you no know, it's gonna come the message you no know? so and then we gotta go into the practice you no know? so this is ways you no know, I can say you no know? yeah, and in this case your grandfather suggested like a dream booster no mm -hmm. a dream booster in this case he was using mm -hmm. the ayauma to have more clarity and direction in mm -hmm. the message of the dreams mm -hmm. with the intention of knowing mm -hmm. more about the plant because mm -hmm. a big part of the study is knowing that we can really direct our like our intention is has a lot of power no our energy has a lot of power and mm -hmm. really get to know how to direct that so mm -hmm. that, that i think that's like really mm -hmm. cool like the importance of dreams basically mm -hmm. no because a lot of people think do i go to the ayahuasca ceremony and see it no so the mm -hmm. question is would that mm -hmm. have a part as well mm -hmm. or was it mainly in the dream space mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. yeah and here i think you no know, uh, i can add as well the framework the traditional or local framework this is not going just to work any plant is not going to activate whoever is going to the jungle it is not just going to like um, activate for you because you just took a bath or you just ingested no the planta well the framework the local or traditional framework we have to no go in devotion no mm -hmm. and like sit there and really like this framework seeing the planta as humans Treating yeah. them the with the heart as a beloved, that's the way I would say, you know, like this answer coming from the traditional you know, way of uh, interacting with plants, you know, so how, because grandmother, you say plantas, they hear, plantas, they, they, they feel, plantas have feelings. No, so like this and they're not just going to appear for you because you just like ingest it no? No? <laughs> <laughs> this is how no this is why the importance of the framework no of local or traditional as well no? one of the ways to commune with the plants is is a dieta or diet can you tell us a little bit of what it is and how it works and the purpose and what it does 